World of Warcraft is a huge game. It takes you over 70 GB to install with all the expansions and all the new things that came with them. Maps, models, quest lines, dungeons, raids, etc. And as such, it's quite easy to miss or even forget about some of the more memorable quest lines in World of Warcraft. Even still, there are some classic quest lines that are just unforgettable. For example, Mancrick's wife. I mean, where is she, man? Well, it will take you quite a while to find her, so while you're looking for her, or doing whatever you're doing, you might as well listen to the story I have to tell you today. During the war against the Lich King back in Wrath, the brave adventurers of Azeroth would fight their way through the continent of Northrend. The bulk of it is a cat and mouse game against the Lich King. You'd beat the crap out of his forces and corner him, only for him to say, boo hoo, I'll get ya next time, and then he would teleport out and he'd be gone for a while until you find him again and he runs away again. You being the five head adventurer that you are, would then go on to chase him down to his house, the Ice Crown Citadel. I mean, he can't escape anywhere from there, right? Of course not. But before we get to do that, we have to brave the zone of Ice Crown. Ice Crown has a lot of interesting lore. You can find and destroy Artis' evil heart beneath Ice Crown. You can reforge a powerful blade called Quel Delar, but you can also help a brave crusader during his last moments in life. What you may not realize when you first come across this questline is that it will lead you to some of the most powerful beings Azeroth has ever seen. At a region in Ice Crown called the Broken Front, there was a big battle between the Alliance and the Scourge. This was supposed to be an operation the Horde was not to know about, but a Horde patrol team noticed the Alliance fighting against the Scourge. The Alliance was fighting a hard battle against the Undead, and the Horde took this moment to strike at both the Alliance and the Scourge troops. Goes to show that even when there is a global horrific disaster, the Alliance and the Horde will still fight against each other. Needless to say, this was a losing battle for both factions, as more and more undead forces descended upon them. Eventually, the Argent Crusade managed to reach the Broken Front in time to save some of the soldiers that were foolish enough to fight amongst each other. Many of the Argent Crusaders perished, but one soul that was braver and tougher than the others was a Crusader named Brydenbrad. He alone dragged more than a dozen men to safety, one by one, until simply going away back to the field of battle and not returning. Tyrion Forging, one of the first and one of the greatest paladins to ever exist, wanted to honor Crusader Brydenbrad for his bravery, and to that end he sends us, the adventurers, out into the frozen wastes of Northrend so that we can find this man and bring him home. No one is certain what happened to him. Maybe he simply perished to the power of the cold, or maybe the scourge got him while he was rescuing someone. That is up to us to find out. During our search through the wastes of Ice Crown, we finally come across Crusader Brydenbrad in the northeastern area of the map. Here he is in a sort of a self-imposed quarantine, for he has been infected by the plague of undeath and would soon enough become a servant of the undead scourge. I know why you've come, they've sent you to bring me back, but that cannot happen. I carry the plague of undeath, and I'll not share my fate with those near me. No, I shall stay here. My only regret lies in what I may become when death grips me. I do not fear death itself, but I loathe to consider serving the traitor Artas. Leave me and see to it that no one else comes looking. You would do me a great disservice if you were to expose anyone to the plague I carry. Crusader Brydenbrad wants us to return to Tyrion and tell him that he has died, or that we couldn't find him. 
the wording is pretty clear. He does not want to be found. What do we as adventurers do? Do we honor the man's last dying wish? Or maybe we go and tell Tyrion what has happened anyway. This would go on to prove to be a good choice, as Tyrion would not, under any circumstances, allow Crusade and Bride and Brad, someone so brave and selfless, to become a pawn of the Lich King, a mindless zombie that would fight against his brothers and sisters in life. Tyrion would not allow this to be the fate of such a champion, and as such he constructs a plan that will aid the ill-fated Crusader. Now that it's crystal clear that we won't allow this man to just die, we will have to go on a quest that will take us all over Azeroth and its many exotic and hidden locations, the first of which is one of the most sacred places for the druids of Azeroth, Moonglade. Here we are to meet Keeper Remulus, a son of Cenarius. Remulus will have us collect three powerful emerald acorns that can only be found in the Emerald Dream. Usually only the druids can enter the Emerald Dream, though there have been a few exceptions in the lore where a non-druid person managed to enter it. This is one of those exceptions. What is also interesting about this quest is that it's called Hope within the Emerald Nightmare. This is a few months before the story of the Storm Rage novel takes place. A novel that is very much about the Emerald Nightmare and sets the stage for the Emerald Nightmare raid that will happen in World of Warcraft Legion. Anyway, the adventurer would collect three Emerald Acorns and then pinch themselves, coming out of the Emerald Dream, or the Emerald Nightmare, I should say. Remulus then sends us back to Brydenbred and we bless him with the seeds of Remulus. Although he feels better, he is still ill and thus sends us to Tyrion to let him know it was an honor to serve beside him. Tyrion is not dissuaded though. He still has a few favors from a few powerful creatures of Azeroth, so he now sends us to the Wormrest Temple, so that we may meet Alexstraja, the Aspect of Life and the Queen of Dragons, who will task us with collecting flowers called Dahlia's Tears. These grow wherever a red dragon sets the ground ablaze. We can see these grow in front of the Wrathgate after the cutscene happens. Dahlia's Tears are named after the High Elf Keeper of Ruby Sanctum, that was killed and turned into a banshee to serve the Lich King. When we collect the flowers, Alexstraja will bestow upon us an item called the Breath of Alexstraja. This item should cleanse the Crusader of the plague, though it is very, very risky. When we come back to Brydenbred, he will ask us why do we risk ourselves so, but state that he is extremely grateful. This sadly doesn't work as well as we'd hoped it would. There are now flowers around Brighton Brad, but he is still ailed by the plague. Brighton Brad again thanks us for our actions and tells us that our actions have assured him that there is still great good in this world and that he can depart the world without the fear of darkness prevailing in his absence. We go back to Tyrion with the bad news. While it seems that the plague will kill Brighton Brad, he will not be raised into the undeath. Perhaps this is a victory, but Tyrion will not accept that either. There is one more chance that he is willing to take, one more being who can possibly help us, a being that's out of this world, on the distant ruin of a world once called Draenor a being that resides in Shatrath city, a Naru called Adal. A Kirintor mage opens a portal for us to quickly head to Shatrath city. We don't have much time, bread and bread could perish at any moment now. A gentle ringing fills our ears when we get to Adal, 
However, he already knows why we came. He already knows of our actions and tells us everything we tried to do to save bride and bread, he already knows. He calls our actions selfless and a miracle unto itself. Adal tells us that the light will take care of its own and that bride and bread shall not endure the corruption of undeath. Adal then teleports us to Dalaran to quickly return to bride and bread instead of you know actually teleporting us to the to bride and bread himself. Okay. When we get there, bride and bread is obviously dying. He looks paler. His breath is more shallow. When we get to him, he still recognizes us though. You have returned to me. I must admit, it is good to see you again. Your face renews my hope that this land will be free of Artis's grasp one day soon. I'm proud to have met you. And with a dim smile on his face, Bride and Bread is gone. But it's not over yet. A gentle ringing fills our ears. At that moment, three Naru appear. Adal, Kuri and Mori, telling us that the light does not abandon its champions and that bread and bread will only taste paradise. From this, the Naru coming from him, we can assume that bread and bread didn't go to the Shadowlands, but to the plane of light, wherever that may be. The Naru and Bride and Bread are gone. With that, the only thing that remains is to take his tabard and take it back to Tyrion as a memento of the brave hero that he was. When we get to him, Tyrion will tell us that he felt a small bit of light leave the land, but that he will take heart in his shining example and our selflessness. And on that bittersweet note, the quest chain is finished. You have probably been hit in the fields enough for today, but there is one more thing that makes this quest chain even more heartbreaking. It's based on a true story. Here is an excerpt from the interview with Robert Breidenbecker, Vice President of Online Technologies at Blizzard, that will make you understand what I'm saying. I will include a small snippet here, but there will be a link to the full video in the description below. And my brother uh, was a really big Warcraft fan. And he, um, he, when he was, I guess when he was 31, he, uh, he was diagnosed with cancer. Um, and he basically, you know, he'd sit at home and he, he'd be, doing his thing but then he would uh he'd play wow when it first came out and he'd always be bugging me you know i was always a little too busy at work and this that and the other but uh but he would play wow and he's like hey you know have you checked out this have you checked that? and he would just geek up uh on on everything wow related uh and he had a couple of kids and he enjoyed like sitting down and playing with them as well and when uh when he died um god i i guess it was two about two years ago um, you know, I remember I was sitting out, uh, sitting out by my pool and I banged off a quick email to the guys on team two and just basically said, Hey, um, you know, the, the storyline in, in the Warcraft universe has always been awesome. Like, is there any way that we can maybe do something for my brother? And it was kind of crazy. Like Metzen, um, Metzen got wind of it. And he, he had gone to my brother's funeral with me, uh, which I thought was awesome. And, you know, he wrote back and he said, well, you know, we can, we can kind of approach this a couple of different ways. We can, you know, we can either make him actually like a part of the main storyline for Lich King, or we could do uh, like a really just epic quest. Um, and 
he found this way and I, I, I actually I forget who did the uh, the writing uh, behind it I know that that Metzen really gave a lot of direction because I remember the email where he basically described the quest line and, and really his vision for the quest line and it was wild because he was able to take my brother's struggle uh, for about four or five years um, and represent it in this fantasy universe and you know just reading it um, just going through and and actually like reading what what Metzen had paraphrased of, of what had gone on it was pretty amazing so the quest line is dedicated to his brother's fight with cancer you can clearly make out the parallels of someone's struggle against such a horrifying illness and the plague in the game. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it. Thank you very much for watching. I love you all and I will see you in the next one. Peace.